Hello everyone, my name is Ninoa and welcome to my unhurried playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn Part 13.3 In today's video we are going to continue our tour of the city-states and cleaning up class quests and side content but this time we are going to do it in Limsalum Minsa. That means we are going to take care of class quests level 10 and 15 for our crafters and gatherers. That's culinarian, blacksmith, armorer. But before those, I'm going to look into Fisher. And these are going to take us in Lanoshea at large. And we're going to use that opportunity to explore a little bit and do a couple of side quests out there as well. Now, without further ado, let's go! Okay, so by now you should start to get pretty familiar with the cities. For Fisher, we're going to head to the appropriately named Fisherman's Bottom. And talk to Sisipu. Level 15. Every fish has a silver lining. Sisipu could use a helping hand with an unexpected order. The rewards are 12,960 points of experience, 382 gil, an fishing rod, rat tails, which are a type of bait, and a choice between cotton shepherd's tunic, body gear level 15, cotton shepherd's slops, body gear level 15, good skin wrist guards, and gear level 16, hard leather espadrilles, foot gear level 15, and alagan bronze pieces. I've been thinking, Nina, now that you can catch more fish than you can eat, it's time you learned a little about the art of fishmongering. Normally, customers purchase fish that have already been caught, but a certain Kirkin sailor has a penchant for freshness. Unfortunately, the fishermen who usually fill his orders have all, somewhat ironically, gone fishing. And so I turn to you, Ninua. I'm hoping you can talk to Tuturun over there. Or at least listen to him. Tuturun's a sailor, sails the seas. You a fisherwoman, fish the fish. Looking out as lookout, Tuturun spots spots in water. Jumping silver fish jump. Flashing silver flashes. Tutarun wish to taste silver fish taste. Tutarun pay good silver if you fish five good silver fish. That was hard to read. <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever. Well, Tutarun has a way with words, doesn't he? You can say that again. Unfortunately, his way appears to be repeating the word silver fish. Only the most experienced fisherman would be able to decipher that nonsense. This sounds like a job for Wawalago, since I'm busy doing his job. Rest assured that what he may lack in sense, he more than makes up for in nonsense. I'm not sure that's reassuring. And I quickly switched out some of my gear. That's why I look a bit different now. Since when is it civil to sneak up and scare your seniors? I suddenly suspected Sisipu sent you to slit my stomach. That woman's well aware of my weakness. If she's going to shout about the way I shove down shrimp, she should know better than to leave them showing on the shelf. Oh, is that not why you're here? No, that's not why I'm here a while ago, but... <laughs> setting devil setting aside, I'll bet your shells are too shellfish, I know what the cook inspired. If it were silver and sounded, while skimming the sea, I'm somewhat certain he saw a navigator's dagger. 
Daggers don't lend themselves to a luminescence liking, but the settlers of the Southerly Isles stir them into soup stock. You can find them by the brewer's beacon. Snaring one is a slippery slate for a starter, but a fitting flick of the fist for a fisherman with a girl's eye like you have. Now, daggers are drawn to decoys that dangle, so do yourself a favor and fetch some rat tails for them to flash their fins at. Alright, so rat tails it is. So we are going to obtain uh, 99 of them at the end of this quest, which is going to be useless to catch them before. So now we have to go to the field craft supplier to buy our bait. Now, you should buy quite a few because sometimes those daggers can be a bit elusive. And then if you're lucky, you're going to get almost five in a row. It's difficult to um, say for sure, so better be safe than sorry. Grab a good handful and then we are going to travel to Elport because this is where the brewer's beacon is. Now I say it is in Elport but it's not quite in Elport, it's actually quite a bit further east. So better off going there by Chocobo, it's going to be a bit faster that way. And we are already seeing the beacon. Now, you can fish in that entire area, quite obviously, but only a very small portion of it is actually the brewer's beacon. And that's the part which is going to be around those bushes on the left. So if you want to be sure to fish in the brewer's beacon, the simplest way is to go behind the bushes and fish there. Also note that the brewer's beacon is only accessible to you once you have reached level 15 because you will need to have acquired a trait called Gull's Eye. Same goes for several other fishing spots on the map which similarly require you to acquire that trait before they become available. Here you can see the Kulai traits in our list. And now it's just a real matter of patience until we get some Navigator's Daggers. Ooh, 
finally! <laughs> I told you this was going to take some time and patience. Okay, so this is the first out of five. It's going to take even more time and patience to get all five of them. So I'm going to fish in peace and spare you the boredom. And I'll see you near the end of the task. And back and you recognize that music, this is the sound of a fate. And this is the sound of a task completed, more importantly. Unfortunately, <laughs> this is where I realized that I've somehow lost my protection of sneak. So I keep getting targeted by buzzards, so I have to run away a little bit. Now once we are in the upper 20s, that's not going to be a problem anymore because we will have the auto sneak trait. But yeah, that was a bit annoying. So just to show you, if I go a little bit away from those bushes and the beacon, As you can see, we are at the Swift Perch fishing point and not at the Brewer's Beacon anymore. And now time to take care of that fate. I mean, I have to do it just for the title. I just died in six arms tonight. <laughs> It is believed that crabs only live for up to two to three years, fewer if nearby luminescent are hungry. There is one crab, however, that is rumored to have survived since the fifth astral era, which is quite a long time. Surviving on the blood of man, though no one can truly back that claim. All things must die, and all six arms' time has come. But it will come back eventually. <laughs> this is a fate that pops up very often. Alright, so we are heading back to Alport, but we won't return to Limsa Laminsa right away. There are a couple of things to do in this area that I want us to look into. Starting with the blue quest appearing on the minimap here. Which, as you might have guessed, is for the level 15 leaves of Elport. Or when the Adventurer's Guild representative for local leaf quests in Airport is seeking an adventurer to undertake guild leaves. 
So awards are 1,440 points of experience and 239 gil. You in need of work, lass? The name's Orwen, and I am a representative of the Adventurers Guild. Notice the hat? I keep a record of tasks that what the locals need doing, then dole them out to adventurers what look capable. Now you look capable, but the last third I reckoned was tough enough got his face beat off by a bleeding wolf rat. You need to prove to me you can handle me jobs. Take a look at this here task. Does that seem like somewhat you could do? Level 15. Tail in Toe. Memaroon likes sparkly shinies. Memaroon walks to manlands to trade good goods for shining sparklies. But Memaroon cannot be going home. Memaroon, afraid by bandits, will be taking Memaroon's sparklies. Is there not kind adventurer to keep Memaroon safe? Memaroon, share shinies to keep Memaroon safe. And although we haven't seen them yet, we can already tell <laughs> what kind of individual that is, can't we? As you can see, we get 1,152 points of experience, 198 gil, and a hard leather grimoire as rewards. Alright then, you need to beckon to your client, Memaroon, to help lead him to his destination. That also sounds familiar. Hmm. <laughs> Where have I seen that before? Oh yeah, the other level 15 leaf quests. Now, obviously, those are just the leaves that you are given to unlock level 15 leaf quests. But after that, all sorts of tasks for the Battlecraft leaves are available. By now, you know the drill. You have the beckon emote on your HUD bar, that's more convenient. Aim at your client. And keep beckoning him forward towards your destination, while taking care of the enemies that show up on the way. Straightforward enough, isn't it? And as I mentioned earlier, you have some time to take care to keep your eyes on the minimap and on notifications because enemies can appear in your back. So that was a good illustration of that. At level 15, that's not going to be too much of a problem. At level 40, eh. Let's just say I've run into a bad experience once. And we are almost there already. Mm. 
no me maroon, you can keep your shinies. And see you later! Completed a task, have you? Then you need only collect your reward. And we got a bit of a bonus here, as always. I reckon you are tough enough to take on the rest of me leaves. Elport's an important hub for trade in the region, and there is no shortage of tasks to be had. I look forward to seeing you make a difference here, adventurer. And we now have access to all level 15 leaf quests across the map, across all three. City-state area. Okay, so that was the only side quest I really wanted to tackle at this stage. But we are still going to return to Limsa Lominsa all the way on foot, so going through quite a bit of Western Lanusia and Central Lanusia, because there are a few gathering points I would like to point you to, starting with this one, which requires minor. And the key item here is mudstone. Now, if you look at the recipes using mudstone, there aren't a lot of them, but there is one of those recipes which is a level 20 by the goldsmith which uses mudstone to create mudstone whetstone and that is going to be used in a lot of other recipes so you want to have some on hand between level 20 and 30 roughly after that it starts tapering out And I forgot about Sneak. Remember, children, don't do that at home. Remember to get out covered. So you can see in blue on the minimap the other two gathering nodes. Those level 20 minor gathering nodes. And if I use triangulate, you can also see the botanist's gathering nodes, which um, we are not going to visit too often. We will visit them once in about three videos from now. And I went for a little crafting, and when I was about to finish, this popped up, a fate between aurochs. Several aurochs have begun grazing alongside the Denevil West Road, frightening merchants and preventing the transport of goods to and from the area. Use any means necessary to urge the beasts from the Sorrow Fair. Having said that, they are big, but they're not nearly as dangerous as their size would have you believe. As you can see, they are very easy to defeat. And that's it, easy. And that also means a new challenge completed. So 
I'm switching to botanist because I will want to use it to gather from the next gathering point up the road. Now those gathering points which start to appear on the minimap now. Most items there are pretty niche. The Lalalfelin lentil is very niche. The island seedlings as well. Unless you start to go into crafting outdoor furnishings. But the one I really wanted here was the paprika because it is going to be needed for one of the upcoming culinarian class quests. Speaking of which, since we are in this area, if you haven't done so already and you have your culinarian class quests upcoming, I suggest you battle some dodos because the dodos drop a number of items in this area and that's going to be dodo feathers which are used in a small number of recipes across the board for crafters. But the other two items, dodo eggs and dodo tenderloins are obviously used by culinarians specifically. But dodo tenderloins in particular are going to be needed for culinarian class quests again. So grab your dodo tenderloins. All right, crossing into Middle Anosia now. So that's going to go pretty fast. In fact, let me jump forward a little bit. So here we are still in Middle Anosia, but getting closer to the entrance of Limsaluminsa and the location called Summerford. And just in front of Summerford, again, you can see them appearing on the minimap. There are gathering points level 15 for botanists. These gathering nods offer straw, which is a material that seems pretty niche because it only pops up from time to time. But you are going to use it all the way to level 90, so it's good to know where it is. If you have limited storage, uh, don't bother gathering any with you, just grab it when you need it. Everything else is going to be used by culinarians. And I went there specifically to grab a few ruby tomatoes because we are going to need them in, again, one of the upcoming culinarian class quests. And also, I already anticipate, I know there is one recipe that I use pretty frequently for my archer once it's about level 50 and it becomes a bard that also use ruby tomato, so I also always have that in mind when I go gathering. Gathering it, I gather quite a few in anticipation for that. Remember though, if you are a player on the free trial, you don't have access to retainers, so you want to be a lot more choosy than I am about what you want to stock for your crafting. And you saw me switch to Fisher again, because it is time to return to the Fisher's Guild and complete the quest now that we have the Navigator's Daggers for Chucharun. Who is probably waiting pretty impatiently. You fish and catch five fish catch for Chuturun? Oh, that was hard to say. <laughs> so 
the shiny shine, the smelly smell. Cannot wait to taste, tasty taste. Well, it looks like we found the fish you were after. You find, find, find. Maybe each other in season with season. Or smoke with smoke. Maybe grill on grill. Many, many cooking options for cook. My, you are certainly putting a great deal of thought into this. Haha, <laughs> Chacharoon gifted to feast on feast gift. Best Chacharoon regard you with Chacharoon's best regards. <laughs> we are always grateful for your patronage, Chacharoon. Please see him out and return here afterwards, Ninua. We have more to discuss. He's really happy about his fish, isn't he? Or I'm assuming it's a he. Phew! I'm glad you were here to handle that sudden request. So many of these freeloading fishermen can't be bothered to stay ashore for more than a day at a time. You, on the other hand, have proven far more reliable. I can think of at least one Kirkin who'd agree. Now that you've seen how rewarding fishmongering can be, I hope you'll take the initiative to try it yourself. And what to choose here was a difficult decision because pretty much everything sells well. At least lately at the time of recording. They're all options that sell for thousands, so um But I've noticed leather pieces like wrist guards and the footwear particularly sells well. And here you saw me switch to my culinarian gear because it's time to tackle the crafters class quest. Level ten. Dodo eat yourself. <laughs> that title. Linksas wants you to assist Ingam with a large order. The rewards are 5,899 points of experience, 289 gil, 250 fire shards, 200 water shards, a bronze skillet, and the usual choice of level 9 to 10 crafter's gear or two alagan bronze pieces for a total of 200 gil. Ah, Ninua, fine timing. I need your help. Remember Ingam? Well, your grilled trout did wonders for his motivation. Lad has been working his ass off ever since. Any road, I saw that give him a chance to prove himself with a big order for delivery but it looks like he might have bit off more than he can chew. Now, everything he's made, he's made to my satisfaction. The problem being what he's not made, and I ain't talking about a missing twill nor a stray crouton, neither. I'm talking about the bleeding main course of grilled dodo, so I'd be much obliged if you could whip up two serving in his stead and get them over to him quick. In case you are not familiar with the dish, it is one of the Bismarck's old favorites. You rub garlic and salt into a piece of dodo tenderloin, then grill it. Should not pose a rising star like yourself, no trouble. But that remains to be seen. No, actually, he's right, that's not difficult. <laughs> there are a few ingredients as well. You will see later on, you will have recipes with a ton of ingredients. That's so annoying. But again, garlic is found is nothing as well, which I have forgotten to show you, unfortunately. So it's in this area in Western Salalan. You know, you can you have this bridge that goes over it. But if you head downstairs, you can reach that area where the rivers go through and you have these gathering points with, with lush vegetation. And you have a number of foodstuff there, including garlic and garlic. Salt you already know how to do, and I talked about the dodo tenderloins earlier. So we can just proceed with the crafting. 
and because there will be one item remaining here automatically we will craft three servings we need only two so I'll try to sell the last one and that's why I'm doing it at high quality but you do not have to for this quest what is it now? The guildmaster has entrusted me with the preparation of a sizable order, so if you don't mind, I shall get back to work. Yeah, about that. You've brought me two servings of grilled dodo? And what precisely do you propose I do with... <gasps> the main course! How could I have forgotten the main bloody course? And it's far too late to start preparing now. Damn it! Your grilled dodo will have to do. I only hope the quality of the other courses and accompaniments compensates for... Well, that's a bit rude. By the twelve, you cooked these? The golden brown hue tantalizing the eyes from betwixt a perfect diamond pattern of griddle lines. The surface is seared to perfection. Aye, over a hot fire to seal in the juices, just as the guildmaster teaches. And this irresistible aroma. Just enough garlic to balance the dodo's gamey richness, but not so much as to overwhelm the palate. Hmm. Beg pardons. As I was saying, this is impressive. Grilled dodo may seem a simple dish, but therein lies the rub. If one thing goes wrong, everything goes wrong. I could not have produced anything near this standard. God damn it! I practice day and night in order to improve my skills, only to botch my largest ever order and then you come along and save the day. You of all bloody people! Ah, oh, what have I done to deserve this? Suffice it to say, I am not pleased with how things have turned out, but you've done me a kindness and I always repay my debts. Listen well, for I shall share with you information that should prove to your profit. You know what guild leaves are, I trust? Well, there is a variety that calls for culinary expertise. They are known as tradecraft leaves and they provide an excellent opportunity to hone your skills while earning coin. If such work interests you, I recommend you speak with Mokri at the Adventurer's Guild. And on that note, away with you. We've just saved his hide, that's how he pays us, oh, by giving us information we already knew. <sighs> Anyways, time to return to Linksas for the next class quest. Level 15, on a skewer tip. Linksas wants you to speak with Ingham, who he suspects has budged another order. The rewards are 12,960 points of experience, 382 gil, a recruit's culinary knife, and the usual choice of gear for level 15 class quests for crafter or an Alagan bronze piece. Well, if it ain't young Ninua, and judging by the burns on your hands, you've been working hard at your cooking. Good on you. You are an inspiration to your peers, lass, especially Ingam. Aye, it's, he's been working like a man possessed since that business with uh, grilled dodo. Not that it's made much difference. Oh, just be told, I'm convinced he's made a pig's ear of things again. He ain't told me as much, mind, but it's writ plain on his face. I've tried to prize a story out of him, see if there is aught I can do like, but he bites his tongue when I'm around, stubborn sud. Any road, I was thinking, might be as he'd open up to one of his peers, and seeing as how you've had such an effect on him, I reckon you might be just the lass for the job. So do us a favor and coax the story out of him, would you? 
Oh, and uh, lend him a hand if he needs one. What have you done again, Ingham? You again? What have you come for this time? Oh, I see. The guildmaster has you spying on me now. He thinks that I'm incompetent and can't be trusted to do my own work. <sighs> Who am I fooling? If Master Linksas thinks that I'm incompetent, it's because I am. With me, it's one bungled order after another. It shames me to reveal this to you, of all people, but I've offended one of the Bismarck's regulars. The man, Mighty Maga is his name, has a soft spot for meat mikabobs, and so I thought I'd impress him with a complimentary skewer. Only to have his expression turn sour the instant he took a bite. I'll never forget the steel in his voice when he said that he would have words with the management. I meant to add luster to Bismarck's proud reputation. Instead, I tarnished it. I want to set things right, but I don't know how. My Timaga is still out on the terrace, but I just can't bear facing him again. Not this soon. Gods, what am I to do? How about I go to see him in your stead? Hmm? No, I shan't be ordering anything else. I see you are still here. Ah, let me guess. You've come to apologize on behalf of the sorry excuse for a chef who made that god's awful meat Mika Bob. Well, I'm afraid the damage has already been done. I have been served second-rate food to Bismarck. It is only right that the man responsible should be dismissed, and I mean to see to it that he is. Do not mistake my intention. I do this thoroughly to preserve the Bismarck's good name. Were it to become known that Linksas was employing the services of inferior chefs, this one's fine establishment would soon fall into disrepute. You have yet to speak a word, but I take it you are not pleased with my evaluation. Very well. If you would have me believe that this incident was an aberration, and not, in fact, indicative of a general decline in standards, I suggest you convince me with your cooking. I will not have it said that I am an unreasonable man. Make me another meat mikabob, one fit for consumption this time, and I shall reconsider my stance. You know what? At this stage I actually feel sorry for Ingham. I do this for the repetition of the Bismarck. Yeah, right. Alright, so the ingredients of the meat mikabob are pretty straightforward and I mentioned almost all of them already. So paprika and ruby tomato, I showed you where to get them earlier. The dodo tenderloin, same as the previous recipe. And table salt, at this stage you should know that by heart. So it's just a matter of crafting some meat mikabob. And again, because we will have some leftover from this... Uh, I've crafted them high quality. Where is my meat mikabob? The other fellow's attempt may have been unpalatable, but at least I did not have to wait for it. Well, no, because it was complimentary, so you didn't even have to order it. <sighs> ah, here it is. Finally. Unless you have any objections, I shall sample it in your kitchen. That way, I can treat Linksath to my opinion with a flavor still fresh upon my palate. Well, well. It would seem you have made amends for your fellow chef's failure. This is as moist and flavorsome a meat me kebab as I have ever tasted, and I've tasted more than I can count. As a matter of fact, I consider myself something 
think of a connoisseur of the dish, and know more than a little about its preparation. Would you like me to tell you what I think your colleague did wrong? Not really, but I don't have a choice, do I? First of all, in his eagerness to seal in the meat's moisture, he left it searing for far too long, producing something akin to charcoal. Not so with your dodo. Its surface is charred just enough to be aromatic, while the middle is still moist. Second, your friend grilled all the ingredients together, even though tomato and paprika require far less time over the fire than meat. To your credit, you did not fall into this trap. Last but not least, your friend was too heavy on the salt. Those with underdeveloped palates may beg to differ, but it is the harmony of sweet, sour and salty that makes a mikabab. And yours, my friend, struck the perfect balance. Which brings me to my conclusion. I was wrong to assume that the quality of your colleague's dish was indicative of a general decline in standards. It would seem the Bismarck's reputation is in no immediate danger. Thus reassured, I shall forget about the incident. Master Linksas has done well to train such a capable culinarian. I pray you continue honing your skills under his tutelage. What an unpleasant character, although if you ever worked in the service industry, that should be pretty familiar. It's very lifelike. Ah, Ninua, just the woman I was looking for. Word has already reached my ears about what you got up while I was away. To hear them tell it, you single-handedly restored old Metimaga's face in the Bismarck. For that, you have my gratitude, lass, and Ingam's too. I told him to thank you in person, but he's too bloody proud. Don't hold it against him, though, eh? I've already forgiven the daft son. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I ain't never been one to give none of mine the axe for buggering up a dish or three. There's no denying our patrons are important, but they ain't me main reason for being here. Nay, my first duty is the training of culinarians, and even if the good name of this restaurant suffers for it, you won't see me shedding no tears. Oh, I love him. You know why, lass? Because it's the people that ultimately make this place, and more than anything else, it's their passion for cooking that I want to bring out. Truth be told, there's only one reason I'd send a man away if he'd stopped wanting to be a culinarian. Of course, I doubt that somewhat that will ever apply to you. In the short time you've been here, you've already proven yourself more than capable. And so long as you keep your nose to the stove, you are only gonna get better. I look forward to seeing what you are capable of, and testing it for good measure. Linksas, definitely on my list of very nice good masters. <laughs> okay, let's pick up this quest now and clean this up once for all. Level 3. A sheepish request. La Hono needs help replenishing the Bismarck's larders. Beg your pardons, good madam, but you are an adventurer, are you not? I realize this is sudden, but... We urgently need help restocking our larders. We are in the midst of preparing a full course meal for soon arriving guests, but I fear we are short on fresh lamb for the main course. I would be grateful if you could procure four slices for us. I dare say it would be quickest to obtain days directly from the source, wild lambs. In case you are unfamiliar with the creatures, I suggest you speak with Abulfar. A sentry stationed in Bulwark Hall, just below the Drowning Wench. All right, let's find this Aburfar. So for that, I'm going to go through the Drowning Wench, take the lift there, and head downstairs.
The Bismarck wants fresh lamb, does it? Gods, I could do with a slice myself, fresh off the grill and dripping in its own juices. Now I am hungry too. Sorry, friend, I haven't had a single bite to eat since my shift began. Any road, you can get lamb easily enough by hunting the lambs that graze outside the city. Go through the Zephyr Gate and follow the path east and south for a bit. You run into the fluffy and tasty critters before long. Okay, I'm probably not gonna hunt lamb with my frying pan. That would not be very uh, practical. Insert imagining yourself running around. <laughs> Hitting love on the head with your frying pan. That's awful. You know what? Let's not. Let's not imagine it at all. So as he said, they are very easy to find just outside the city gates to the south. And well, it's easy to one-shot them, but then again, it's a level 3 quest, so... Now, there are a small number of recipes that require ram horn, and you get them as drops from the lost lambs. So you might want to farm those a little bit, if and when necessary. For now, let's return to um, Limsalaminsa and complete the quest. So now all we need to do is bring back the meat to Hlahono. Have you had any luck obtaining the fresh lamp? Please hurry, the guests are arriving any moment now. Four slices of fresh lamp and right in the nick of time. Thank you ever so much. These times like this I feel fulfilled in my role. I used to be a chef myself, you see, but my skills were not quite up to par. So when the Bismarck expanded operations, I asked to be made its provisioner instead. This way I can still be part of the business in spite of my shortcomings. Well, good on her to find her own niche and, you know, find where she'll be most useful to the guild. And as you can see, this was recorded during the Heavensturm event, with all the decorations still in place. Okay, time to hit the blacksmith and armorer's guild. And talk to our best friend, Brizel. <laughs> Level 10, riveting rumblings. Forge Master Brizel has something important to tell you. The rewards are 5,899 points of experience, 289 gil, 250 fire shards, 200 earth shards, a bronze crossbane hammer, and the regular choice of level 10 crafted gear or two elegant bronze pieces. You know what, lass? It may not be my place to say it, me being your guild master and all, but I like you. I really like you. 
together, there is note we can't... What? Why are you making that face at me? Oh no, I... I didn't mean it like that. You are the most promising pupil I've had in God's know how long, is all. I was just waxing sentimentals for a moment. Brizel, I love you and all, but please don't wax poetics because that's... just not your thing. You can't honestly tell me you don't get a bit emotional when you've been out the night before and... Uh... Bah, forget it. Been working hard, have you? Aye, I can't tell. But this is just the beginning, lass. You see, the art of blacksmithing is deeper than the deepest ocean. And if you plan on getting to the bottom of it, you'll need to... You'll need to... Where is this going? Sink? No, that's no good. Alright, how about this? If you mean to set sail for the faraway land of uh, uh, smithing mastery, you must... I mean, you must not try to make the journey in a dinghy. That, that's very convoluted. I n have no idea where I'm going with this. <laughs> bah, the hell's with it. Just make me a dozen bronze rivets, lass. See? Straightforward is a way forward. Especially for Brizel. And straightforward is also applied to this quest. Because bronze rivets are made of bronze ingots. So it's really craft 12 bronze ingots, transform them into bronze rivets and be done with it. So I'm quickly going to do that. Okay, we have a few high quality items crafted, so we need to lower the quality and then stack them with the uh, no quality items in order to hand everything over together to Brazil. Like I said, quick and easy. Oh, those damn rivets coming along. Anytime now, lass. Praise the builder, you've done it again. These rivets are perfect. Ah, but don't take that to mean they are special, cause they ain't. You see, rivets have got to be perfect, and I'll tell you for why. If you are pounding something and your hammer breaks, you can just grab a new one. But it's a whole other story when your rivets fail. Ever seen an airship, lass? Marvelous things they are, but bloody complicated. Now, imagine you are a dozen miles above Limsa, and your fancy flying boat starts springing rivets. Might be as it's from the engine, might be from the hull. Don't make no difference. Whichever it is, you are really buggered. <laughs> well, he's right. It's, it's, it's fair. It's, it's a true story. 
If I was on that airship last, taking in the gorgeous view as a confounded contraption tumbled down to the earth below, I'd be cursing them rivets with all me heart. Aye, and the half arsed bastard has shut them out too. <laughs> this is amazing. Ah, oh, that's the best one so far. And you would not want that on your conscience, would you? Which is why you must always make quality products what stand the test of time. To help you learn the importance of quality, I want you to try smithing for paying customers. Start by having a word with Mokri down at the wench. She should be able to point you in the direction of a few Lominsans as needs the services of a talented lass like yourself. Hone your craft, earn some coin, hells, have a drink while you're at it. The wench is always serving. Him and the droning wench. The real love story of a Ravenborn. Level 15. The business of blacksmithing. Forge Master Brizel seems upset. Perhaps there is something you can do to help. The rewards are 12,960 points of experience, 382 gil. A recruits file and the usual choice of crafting gear or an Alagan bronze piece for 100 gil. Ah, hell's not now, lass. Can't you see I'm struggling with a matter of great import? Being forge master ain't all drink and debauchery, especially when Nanza's breathing down me neck. We are business, she says, and it's our job to ensure Naldik and Vimali stays profitable or some such bollocks. To which I says, now look here, you greedy shrew. We are making a mint of our commission from the Maelstrom, ain't we? Well, I may not have said shrew. Any road. The greedy shrew then starts yattering on about expanding into new bleeding markets. Says we should be selling more to the tree folk in Gridania. Says I should be the one to develop a plan of action. Seven hells, lass. I'm a smithy, not a merchant. I've never even been to bleeding Gridania. And it gets worse. See, we need a man with connections, don't we? Someone else can make arrangements with a tree folk. So Nanza goes and finds one, right clever bastard by the sound of it, and orders me to go and meet him. So I goes and meets him, only to find it's none other than bleeding Faza, and I'd sooner bash me on teeth in than talk to that piece of... Language! Language. Wait a minute, I know how to deal with this. You can talk to him. You'll help old Brizal handle this Gridanian nonsense, won't you? Of course you will. Go on then, chop chop. Ah. Here on Brizal's behalf, you say? I might have guessed. That whore son doesn't realize the trouble he's in. Well, it's his neck. I'll work with you, Smith, and I'll even keep my diction simple. Taking instruction from that drunkard will have dulled your wits. Now listen. Dealing with Gridanians is no different from dealing with anyone else. Everyone has needs. It's just a matter of identifying and fulfilling them. Anyone with half a brain which discounts your mentor, knows that the forestborn do not want for wood or leather goods. You'd have more luck selling brine to a fishback. What they do lack is steel. Theirs is an insular, isolated nation that has long sought to survive without relying overmuch on foreign trade. But the calamity changed all that. Half a decade on, and with no end to the rebuilding in sight, they have been forced to open their gates to adventurers. And where there are adventurers, there's demand for weapon and armor. 
quality weapons and armor, mind you. Magridanian contacts would accept nothing less. I will need some samples to show them. Bring me a bronze spaza and a spiked bronze labris for this purpose. Well, one thing is for sure. The high regard they hold for each other is very much mutual. Okay, so... We need to craft these two items, the, bron the bronze spaza and the spiked bronze labris. So the bronze spaza, as you can see, requires a bit of hard leather and a ram horn. So we just saw earlier in this video where you can get the ram horn, which is a more niche item. And for the spiked bronze labris, it's just ash, lumber and bronze ingots. So that should be pretty straightforward. And as a crafter, that's a couple of things that you should have on you pretty much all the time. Or at least the materials to craft these items. Okay, and I can already return to blacksmith to craft the metal and then put everything together. And you briefly saw an announcement for a new achievement, which is this one, an eye for detail blacksmith. So that's because I crafted a hundred items HQ with blacksmith. And it's part of a series, just like the uh, I made that blacksmith as well. I've almost fulfilled the first one. There are a lot of those crafting and gathering achievements, but they're not easy. Well, they're not difficult. It's just that they take a lot, a very long time to achieve like this one. Uh, you can get a title at the end of that series of a knife for quality. Uh, but as you saw, it's going to require 10,000 high quality crafted items to get us there so let's just say it's not going to happen anytime soon i mean i love crafting but there's loving crafting and uh, loving crafting and not having a life outside this game which is okay i'm not judging i'm just saying i i can't afford to do that so yeah, a long time it is, but I keep the faith, you know, 10,000. Yep. <laughs> no, but there will be um, occasions to craft a whole lot of items later on. Also in expansions. So again, it, it, it may take all the way to Endwalker, but I will get there eventually. I 
again, reminder, I crafted hi HQ items, but you don't have to for this quest. Bring me a bronze spaza and a spiked bronze labrys. Until I have them in my hands, we have nothing more to discuss. Well, that's clear enough. Hmm. This will require closer inspection. Inside, Smith. You made these weapons? I must confess, the quality is quite good. I thought you know more than Brizel's Aaron girl, but it seems I was wrong. Only a true smith could have made these pieces. As I rather suspect you are aware, a poorly wrought weapon can cost a man his life. Be it brittle, prone to blunting or unevenly weighted, every flow will serve to hinder its owner on the battlefield. Not so this Spartha. While tempered and perfectly balanced, it is a weapon fit for a warrior. Else, with a blade like this, even I could probably best a beast or two. And this Labris is a work of art as well. Simple, solid and more than capable of cleaving a fish back in two. If even a relative newcomer to the guild can produce work of this quality, then my contacts will have not to worry about. The samples should convince them of that. It seems you've saved your mentor's job. You just leave it the rest to me, Smith. There's nothing easier than selling an excellent product. Well, that ended on a good note. And to be fair, I don't think even Brizel would be upset by that. I think he would rather be relieved. <laughs> I mean, he has his faults, but he's very encouraging. To be fair. Level 10. The base fundamentals. Forge Master Nanza wants you to assist a novice armorer who is struggling with the basics of the craft. The rewards are 5,899 points of experience, 289 gil, 250 ice shards, 200 earth shards, a bronze doming hammer, and the usual choice of gear for level 9, 10 crafters, or two alagan bronze pieces for a value of 200 gil. Ah, Ninua, just the last I was hoping to see. I have a new initiate that has near exhausted my reserves of patience, and I think she would benefit from seeing the results of a peer's dedication and skill, specifically yours. Her name is Granai, and Boulder help me, she's the most distracted, fumble-fingered craftswoman ever to lift a hammer. If she could but learn to forge the simplest of items without constant supervision, I would consider it a rare victory. It is unfortunate that Byregot did not see fit to invest all of my armorers with your Inet talents. But I suppose we must all start somewhere. And if I abandoned every initiate that was slow to grasp a technique, our guild would have a grand total of, what, nine members? May have ten. I jest, but it would be few enough for our clients in the Maelstrom to have to share breastplates. So what say you, Ninoa? You need only craft a dozen sheets of bronze plate to supplement Granet's arms. When they are ready, I want you to deliver them to the last in person. Mayhap your example will inspire her to take more care with her work. The only thing about this is that you need a good stock of both copper and tin because each bronze plate is made out of two bronze ingots 
So I went ahead to uh, gather a lot of that in Sunderland. 24 bronze ingots. Thanks the developers for thinking of creating quick synthesis. There! Next up, the bronze plates, and that's going to be marginally faster. Well, actually, it's going to take half the time because they're half as many to craft. It's a good thing to do when you just need to, uh, you know, empty your head, forget about all your troubles. <laughs> of the day and just not think too hard about anything. I just have the one lower quality stack and we're good to go. Oh, you must be Ninua. The guild master told me you'd be... Wait, where did I put my hammer? Ah, there it is. Sorry, what were you saying? Right, yes. I would be most grateful for the extra sheets of bronze plates. God, did you craft these yourself? Why, they're absolutely... Whoa, nearly dropped them. No harm done, though. As I was saying, I can certainly see why the Forge Master speaks so highly of your work. The bronze is a perfect color and thickness, so I assume you carefully measured out the amounts of tin and copper? I always add too much tin. Did you know that metal can shatter? Well, I didn't, truth be told. I've tended to put all my effort into making the armor itself rather than bothering with the base materials. I mean, compared to hammering out glorious winged helms or ornate greaves, measuring out metals just seemed so trivial. But looking at your work, I'm beginning to wonder. I never realized how beautiful a simple sheet of bronze could be. With materials like this, just imagine the sturdy, shiny suits of armor one might create. It seems I've been putting the cart before the chocobo. From this moment onwards, I swear to focus all my attention and care on the task at hand, even if the task at hand is forging bronze ingots. And what of you, Ninua? Do you have any ground projects waiting for you on the anvil? I overheard some of the senior armorers boasting about the coin they made through tradecraft leaves. Might that be something you'd consider? They say it's Mokri over at the Droning Wench is the one to talk to, and that's where I'll be heading once I improve my techniques. Now, where did I put that hammer? Granny and her hammer. She sounds like me. That's kind of my problem. 
I'm very forgetful about that kind of practical things. Okay, time to tackle the very last class quest of part 13. Level 15. One's own worst critic. Forgemaster Nanza wishes you to offer a sympathetic ear to a novice armorer. The rewards are 12,960 points of experience, 382 gil, recruit suppliers, and the usual choice of craft a gear at level 15 class quests or an Alagan bronze piece. Where have you been, Ninua? There's work to be done. I need you to speak with another novice, a lass by the name of Durst Rida. I was due a barbet and a buckler from her a few bells ago, but I find myself standing here with nary a nose guard. Lest you wonder, Durst Rida is nothing like Rane. She's as dedicated to the craft as you are, and I've never known her to miss a delivery. Something must be amiss, and I need to find out what. I'd gonna ask her myself, but I fear my usual approach would do more harm than good. The lass might be built like a sack of anvils, but she flinches at the merest hint of criticism. That's why I've decided to assign you as Dust Reader's supervisor for this job. I'm counting on you to sort this out, Ninoa. Built like a sack of anvils. Really? Oh, she's not. A pleasure to meet you, miss. I'm sorry the Forge Master had to interrupt your work so that you might assist me with mine. I do hope you're not angry. I don't know if I could endure another dressing down. As pathetic as it sounds, that's actually the reason my delivery is late. I just can't bring myself to work. I'm sorry, I should start from the beginning. A short while ago, I received a visit from an armorer by the name of Blanster. He is one of the old guard, a true veteran of the guild. After but a single glance at the armor I had made, he yielded that my work wasn't fit to cover a cobbled sars. And now I cannot banish the scene from my mind. His face twisted in anger, those scornful words. Am I truly so talentless? The shame, it, it paralyzes me. If you had explained the flaws in my work, I might endeavor to correct them. But I could not bring myself to speak to him, or to anyone else for that matter, not until now. Might you speak with Blunt Steer on my behalf? I would know the reason behind this this reprimand. <sighs> Maybe he was just being an ass. That that's a, that's also an explanation. Hi, I'm Blanster. If you are looking for an armorer with skill and integrity, you found him. What are you after then? Eh? You want to know what's amiss with Dust Twitter's work? <laughs> One of the guild's newer faces, are you? All these whelps training under Nanza get their heads filled with daft, bloody notions of cooperation and camaraderie when what they should be learning is how to use a pair of pliers. I've yet to meet one of her novices as could forge an ingot worse down. And them as ain't got the skill ain't worth me time. Which means you, girl. Now bugger off. Not budging, eh? Worrisome wench. All right, then. I'll tell you what. I'll give you one chance to prove yourself. Let's see you craft the same pieces as your friend made them such a meal of. A decorated bronze barbet and a bronze buckler it were. And if they are half decent, we'll have ourselves a nice little chat. <sighs> Charming. Anyways, decorated bronze barbet and bronze buckler. The decorated bronze barbet requires quite a lot of items. The bronze buckler is more straightforward. It's just metal. 
So that's uh, pretty easy. So is a bronze barbet, but it requires metals that can only be forged by a godsmith as opposed to an armorer. And first it requires me to craft a bronze barbet to begin with. So I'm going to start with a copper ingot and bronze and brass ingot, sorry. From the goldsmiths and then I craft all the other parts needed for by the armor. So now I'm just checking what parts I will need and I realize that I will also need to craft some iron rivets. So that will be the first time I use iron as an armorer. And reminder, if you haven't seen my last video, what are you waiting for by the way? Um, you can find iron ore, which are, you are going to need to craft this iron ingots and then the rivets in Western Sunderland around the entrance of Copper Bell Mines. So here I'm calculating in my head how many bronze ingots I will need for the buckler, for instance. But remember that if you are not too familiar with the crafting of these items, like the bronze plates, etc., uh, you can just right click on an item in the crafting log and bring up both the list of raw materials needed in total and the recipe tree, which might be helpful. And you will see again as we progress in the crafting that some items require a lot of materials. Already the decorated bronze barbet because you need to craft one item in order then to uh, improve it with additional material. So both the materials the recipe tree and the list of raw materials can come very much in handy. For the decorated bronze barbet, you need to click on the bronze barbet icon in order to select what is in your inventory list. Note that if you have the item in your armory, you won't find it. It needs to be in the inventory list for it to be selectable, to be crafted upon. Bring me a decorated bronze barbet and a bronze buckler 
or you'll get no out of me self curses, you whipping sack of Sahagin shite. Is, does he think that's going to frighten me? Nah. Back at last, are you? I was beginning to think you'd crawled off to Ulda to buy the damned things from a Bakali peddler. Any road, let's have a look, shall we? I was crafting it in plain sight of you, you... Anyways. Bugger me, are you sure you made these yourself? Huh. Seems at least one of Nanza's whelps knows the difference betwixt hammer and sledge. Builder, take me, you've some talent, lass. The barbet well shows the character of your work, precise and uncompromising, as it should be. You've realized that forging a helm ain't a matter of slapping a few molded sheets of bronze together. Nice. And your buckler is just as good, small and light, but a damn sight sturdier than shields twice the size. I didn't expect to be saying this, but I'm impressed. With this level of quality and polish, you could make a tidy living for yourself as an artisan. But you as exception as proves the rule, lass. Fact is, the other novices ain't fit to lick your boots. Just to it I included. So you tell her this from me. If you have the time to wallow in wounded tears, you have the time to examine your own mistakes. There's no room in this world for craftsmen as can't criticism their own handiwork. So learn how to gauge your feelings and correct them or hang up your bloody hammer. Well, that's a little harsh, isn't it? I mean, if she's a novice, she's still learning. Which, well, he has a point. It's kind of... Unnecessary heartful? Or oh, hung up my bloody hammer. Well, thank you for passing on Blunster's advice. I, I believe I understand what he means to say, but not everyone has the inner fortitude to endure such criticism be it from oneself or from others. If such strength is required to master the armorer's art, then mayhap I have mistaken my calling. I joined the guild with a dream of following in, following in Nanza's footsteps, but I see now this was folly. I shall have to think long and hard about my aspirations. Please convey my apologies to the forge master for the delay. I joined the guild with a dream of following in Forge Master Hananza's footsteps, but every day brings another lesson in humility. Mayhap it isn't meant to be. Okay, one, you really should apologize yourself. Two, that kind of criticism just isn't helping. It merely discourages people. Ah, so it was Blunt Steel that caused this mess. The old bastard always did take it upon himself to weed out the weaker initiates. We are not exactly on the best terms, he and I, even after all this time. I've known Blunster since we were naught but wide-eyed novices serving our apprenticeships under the same master. We always had our differences, but when our master retired, they became that much more stark. And when we both put ourselves forward for the role of Forge Master, the resulting contest drove a permanent wedge between us. Blunsteel's arguments are not entirely without merit, but neither is his approach the only way to train new armorers. For that damnable commercial though, it's his way or no way at all. The idea of nurturing an oath less than God's given talent is anathema to him, and his ears wax deaf at the mere mention of it. But outfitting an army is the work of more than a talented few. It is a work of many hands acting in unison. Yep. I've turned a blind eye to Blunster's behavior until now, but if he would threaten the unity of this guild, something must needs be done. I will think on it. Uh, 
I mean, Blunster is right to be very demanding because you are crafting mostly armor. And if armor is not up to scratch, this is going to cost other people's lives. But if you are going to uh, scare everybody away, there's nobody's going to be left because you might frighten the novices who aren't as talented away but you might also create an atmosphere where even talented people whose work you respect are not going to want to stay either not to mention as Nansa said there might just not be enough people in the end anyways we will have to wait for the next few class quests to see how all this pans out but that's not going to be right away uh, we are done with class quests for a little while the next two videos are going to be entirely about the MSQ we are going to push it all the way to about the halfway point of a Realm Reborn 2.0 so up to uh, level 24-25 and we will unlock a new dungeon so that's all there is to look forward to for, again, the next two videos. In the meantime, I wish you all a great day, a wonderful week ahead, and until next time, bye-bye.